I've just bought again another Fujifilm XF10 camera. Let me tell you why in this video now. Hi there and welcome to Tudor Talks. My name is Tudor Matescu and I want to share with you why I've bought again this small camera, this Fujifilm XF10 camera. So if you are liking content like this, please subscribe for more content about camera gear, Fujifilm cameras, photography tips and tricks. So my story with Fujifilm XF10 and small compact cameras like Ricoh GRC, it is complicated. It is complicated. I've made a special video where I've said why I didn't bought yet Ricoh GR3. Check link in the card if you are curious about my reasons. And I had XF10 for over a year or something like that. And after making several videos about XF10, I've decided to sell it. What was very, very frustrating for me with this XF10 camera was the AF. The AF, it's not working at our daily standards, like a Fujifilm XE4, like a Fujifilm XE3, or like a Fujifilm X100V. The AF it is very very slow, so you can't rely on AF for street photography. You can do some street photography with AF, of course, but it's not it's not like you are seeing on other YouTube channels and YouTube videos where they are telling you that I just uh, set the AF point to a very small point. I just click and take the shot. Yes, if you don't want to get the decisive moment, if you are okay with a leg for one second, it may be okay for you. But for me, it's not. I want to freeze the moment when I want it. So, the AF, it is important for me. But this camera, it's not made for AF, like Ricoh GRC. So, after selling my XF10 and after looking at my pictures with XF10, and after missing the small, small factor, it is very small, very compact, very light. It is small as a smartphone. So after realizing that I've lost all these features and especially, and especially very, very good image quality, top notch image quality. If you are asking me above X100 V regarding acuity of the JPEGs and also of the RAW files, tonalities, dynamic range, sharpness, and so on. So after feeling that I've lost all that by looking at my files on the big screen, but also in printed forms, in printed forms, I've realized, man, I need this camera back. I need this camera back because there are often times when I can't take my X100V with me or XE4, because for X100V or XE4, you really need a small bag. You can't put those cameras in your pocket, even if it is a jacket pocket. It's, it's not comfortable, it's, it's strange. Also, you need batteries and the batteries are bigger than an XF10 battery. So, when looking at XF10, it is very small and very compact. I can take this camera in any pocket, in any pocket, and it's comfortable. This is very important. This camera, it is comfortable in any pocket. This camera, it's not forcing me to take a bag, even a small bag. It's not forcing me to take a small, small bag. I can take this camera with any pocket that I have on me. So, huge deal. Also, the battery life, it is very, very good. It is very good. And also the batteries are very small. So in my trouser pocket, I have a small battery for backup. So this means everywhere I go, in any condition that I'm able to find myself, I can take this camera with me. So this is where XF10, it is winning for me. So good image quality, good battery life, small batteries, so I don't need to take bags for the batteries. And a workable system to do street photography, urban photography, and all kinds of photography styles that you want to do with this Fujifilm XF10. And regarding image quality, 
I will let a link in the description or in the comments where I will link a blog from a, a known blogger that is using medium format cameras and he also used Ricoh GR3 camera. And he also said that he's feeling that he's feeling that the XF10 image quality it is better than the Ricoh GR3. And this is what I've told in my video. I feel too that the image quality from this camera it is better than the image quality from the Ricoh GR3. But again, the image quality is not a differential factor. It's not like we are having a huge difference in image quality. Both are having good image quality, but this is better. This is what I'm feeling. I've proved in my videos that I can recover four stops of dynamic range and also in the highlights with this camera. Check my review about Fujifilm XF10, link in the card here. So four stops of dynamic range, crazy good. This camera can be used with no problems at ISO 6400. But, but what is the most, most, most important aspect of XF10, it's the acuity of the files. It is the perceived sharpness of the JPEGs, but also of the RAW files. So this is where Fujifilm XF10 is winning it, because you can't use AF. So this means that at a pixel level, your image, if you don't have a static subject, it will not be sharp. And also in fast moving scenes, like uh, in a street photography scene, you will use this camera at f8, f5.6, the snapshot modes, and even f11, and even f16. And this camera has very, very good perceived sharpness at f16, f11, f8, and f5.6. And also at pixel level, of course, and also at pixel level. But even if your subject, it's not entirely in sharp print focus because the subject moved, you moved the camera, the subject will pop. The scene, it is very, very well rendered. The scene is very, very 3D rendered with this camera. When you are editing the files, but also in the JPEG files, but especially when you are doing a Nick Silver editing with this camera, a black and white. But you really don't need to use uh, Nick Silver, also a black and white conversion in Adobe Lightroom, how I'm showing in this video, are sufficient, are sufficient this black and white conversion to make the subject pop, to make the scene clear. You are able to see very clear the objects, the distance from the person to the urban scene and so on. So all it's very clear, all it's very pleasing to look for the eye. Also the colors are great, great tonality. So the colors, the tones of the colors, but also having good tones in color. So in light, you have very, very good tones in black and white, in shades of gray. So a totally, a totally capable, full of image quality camera. But how I'm using this camera? So for me, again, I've decided I will not have any expectations regarding the AF. So this will stop frustrating me. But also I have X100V and XC4 with 18mm f2 and these cameras are helping me use AF when I want to use AF, so especially in low light. But I've used this camera also in low light, in night photography. And you can do zone focusing at f2.8 in night photography if you really want to do this. And it's fun, it's fun. So, very usable camera with zone focusing. Talking about zone focusing, this is the way I'm using this camera. I especially want to use this camera in bright sunny days because good photography, it's done with light. Again, good photography, it's painting with light. So when I have light, I can use this camera in three modes, in three modes. I can use this camera with the snapshot modes, the f5.6 to 5 meters pre-focused and pre-closed aperture. So when you are taking the shot, 
it's very fast, very, very fast. You don't have aperture lag. X100 series suffered with aperture lag. You don't have this when you are using the snapshot function of this camera. I don't know if on Ricoh GRC you can close the aperture before taking the shot. So if you can't do that, it is possible that you'll have there a lag. But here, absolutely no lag at all when you are using the snapshot modes. So for f5.6 or even f8 with pre-focus to 2 meters, you'll basically have any picture in focus. So even if your subject it is far behind you or it is closer to you, you really can't miss the shot. Let's say the subject it is at 2 meters and you are pre-focused at 5 meters with f5.6 settings. So the first snapshot mode of this camera is not important. It's not important because the acuity of the files, the perceived sharpness, the tonalities, the micro contrast, all these goodies packed in this combo, sensor and lens, will make the scene look good, will make the picture be in acceptably focus area. So you really will not have any complaints if you are patient about street photography. You don't take this camera to do studio shots. You can also do studio shots, of course, but when you are doing street photography, you want that gritty, nitty, black and white file. So an image that is not very, very well focused, but you will perceive there a little movement. You will perceive there a subject that is not in clear focus. It's not a problem for a street photography. These so-called problems are making the pictures even better if they are street photography pictures. So you will have no problems when you will use this lens in any snapshot mode. So even if you didn't have the camera well set it, you will still be able to get the shot. And this is the next huge point where I want to get. This camera will help you get any shot that you want. This is why I like small compact cameras. And this is why, uh, how I said, I like the concept of Ricoh GR3. I really like it because small compact cameras with a 28 mm focal lens with good image quality and especially good image quality like this will help you get any shot because you can crop in later because you have here enough resolution to crop in, enough resolution to make a 50% crop. You have enough resolution to do this and the image will still look good. And the image will still look good. So crazy, crazy stuff. I can take snaps like this and depending on the scene, I can correct the image in post-processing and I will also have a good image with good resolution. So this camera, can be taken with you anywhere and can help you get any shot that you want if you know how to use this camera and what expectation to have from this camera. So this is also available for Ricoh GR3, of course, of course, but this is way, way less expensive than Ricoh GR3. So this is where this XF10 it is winning it for me. I really don't need the um, Flippy screen, of course, a flippy screen, it will be nice. It will be a nice edited bonus because it will help you get better compositions. But you can learn the focal lens. You can learn the focal lens and you will know how to tilt the camera and how to point the camera so you will be able to do the shot. And even more, and even more. This camera, it is so small and the... Uh, it can be hide it in your palm. It can be hide it in your palm. So people will not know if this is a camera or a smartphone. And this is very important. Also, this camera is so dinky, little and stupid looking that people will look at you like a stupid photographer, not like a professional photographer. So you will not be harassed by uh, the guards or by other people what you are doing with this camera. They are looking, oh, he's playing with the camera. Look at him, you know? It is very, very, how I've said, uh, non-intrusive. You will not um, make the subject feel uh, annoyed by you. They will look at this camera like, what is that toy? <laughs> what is that toy? So 
this guy it's um, ticking lots of boxes, lots of boxes, but yes, the AF boxes are not ticked by this camera. But also the Ricoh G3, again, it's not ticking the AF boxes. But I think when we are buying these cameras, we must accept and know, know for sure that we can't rely on AF and adapt our shooting style to the camera. And if we will adapt our shooting style to the camera without AF, and of course we can use AF when we want, there are specific situations when the AF it is helping, then we'll get the most joy and the most fun from these cameras. So in conclusion, I'm very glad that I was able to buy again XF10. Very, very glad about this. I will uh, for sure not selling it again, not selling it again. And if I will find the gold version, maybe I will buy a second copy because this is a great camera to give to your kids to learn photography also. And uh, because again, it's small, a kid can maneuver this camera very, very well. So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe now, now, now to my channel. Also check my affiliate links if you want to support the channel. Check my membership part of my YouTube channel for more private POVs and more tips and tricks regarding photography. And also leave a donation because with the donations I will buy more gear and make real world street photography comparisons. And I'm really curious now about the Ricoh GR3 and if I will be able to raise donations to get a Ricoh GR3, to compare it in real world street photography with XF10, it will be great. So thank you for watching this video. Leave me a comment, give it a like, share my video. And also, please be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much and talk to you soon. Bye bye.